So let's do this. Bye bye. There we go. Now we play ball. You know, Tesha Mutna Sword really just deals with that so good there. If we want to play it like that. It saves our other tool punish. I could go for Leap as well. Yeah, it's pretty clean. Hey, what's up my friends? How are you? And welcome back to yet another deck guide. For today, I've put together a Nilfgaard list that I hope you'll enjoy. The leader ability that we're going to be using is Imprisonment, as you can see here. It allows us to lock an enemy unit, damage it by three. We have two charges of this. What you want to do is really use leader sparingly. In the best case scenario, you could use it over a long round three, when we're going to have a lot of control across the board to shut down all of our opponent's plays. However, we really want to ensure a long round with this deck most of the time, or round control at least. I think it's best. So if you feel like you're losing round control a bit, you can go ahead and maybe commit one leader just to help secure it. The stratagem that we're using is Magic Lamp, as you can see here. We just get this token unit. This is when we're going first. So I'm going to run you through this list bottom up and explain how best to play each card and when to play it during your match. To begin with, we've got the Emissary down here. It's a disloyal unit, meaning it goes to your opponent's side of the board, and it's going to be boosting an ally by seven, one of our chosen units. This is a card that we have in here to work with Braithens more than anything else, just to give Braithens a proactive choice of play if we're going first into the round. But what I'd suggest is really tucking away Emissary and not really looking for it most of the time. We're playing Masquerade Ball, so we need Aristocrats to trigger that. These units that we have here are Aristocrats. We're looking to play them on the range draw most optimally and effectively because they allow us to lock a unit. So you could save this as an activator for ball, as I explained, but it can be pretty good around one, two, if you want to shut down a strong engine of your opponents. We've got Calvate in this list, so we've got a number of tactics now to go through. Tony Joust, it offers our deck some control. We can damage a unit by four. If it's shielded, we get to remove the shield, damage it by four. Also, we can boost the unit and give it a shield. So I've got two of these in list here. Double ointment as well. Um, it's more in here just for the sake of Calvate. We need tactics to make sure we get Calvate as quick as possible in a match, in our hand, okay? So this allows you to boost the unit by five. If it's a soldier, heal it first. Not necessarily any synergy to work with in our deck other than Calvate, all right? So you're not really gonna look for ointment. Diplomacy, another tactic. Create and play a bronze card from your opponent's faction. <laughs> Could be nice when playing Braithens and Duchess Informant because you can copy units and then maybe synergize them with whatever you spawn from this card too. And this will trigger the Assimilate for Braithens. So you could definitely play this with Braithens round one, I'd suggest. Duchess Informant is in here for Braithens. This little unit, just like the Emissary, so same kind of idea, goes to your opponent's side of the board. You get to spawn and play a base copy of a non-disloyal bronze enemy unit though, okay? So most of the time you want to play Braithens into getting an informant out on the board. That's usually the best play. Um, with the Duchess informant, definitely play it when you're playing Braithens and it's a round one card. So with the Mage Assassins here, they're a package. I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with this, but for the newcomers, I'll just briefly outline how this card works. So basically with both Mage Assassins, we always want to keep them in deck and we do have cards that bring them out to the board being the blight makers that you see here so the blight maker package with mage assassin is a round one play for us it gives us tempo helps to secure round control <clears throat> and what we want to do is when you're playing blight maker you get to choose a card move it to the top 
the chosen card will be the mage assassin it gets drawn out to the board two points of random damage okay so this is just to help make sure we get round control and gives us tempo so feel free to play both black makers out round one we got one thirsty dame in here aristocrat this is to work with masquerade ball just so we got more aristocrats in deck just to make sure we get enough activation whenever an enemy unit receives a status boost off by one works very good because we're playing double for leap in this deck so these become a good engine piece boosting as long as we're giving statuses so you're going to keep this when you're playing ball would would preferably be over a long round three now we're coming to this interesting card here Tesha Mutna Sword, damage an enemy unit by five. Repeat once for each status it has. So to my understanding, it does five points of clean damage as a base to begin with. The more statuses, the more fives of damage you can add to that, which is pretty great in a Philippe deck. So I'd suggest playing the sword with both Philippe's because we're going Letho into Philippe. We're doing a double Philippe here. And you could give extra statuses with Philippe to a card and maybe makes sword really good just to destroy something if you want to get it out of there quick. So I'd suggest playing those two in combination when you can. So yeah, we've got Philippe here. We're really looking to use this over a long round three when you're playing Masquerade Ball because if you control a vampire, you gain zeal. So it seems to work better that way. The orders that you give Doom to an enemy unit, if it already has a status, you get to lock it instead. If it already has more than one status, poison it instead. Cool down one. So I maybe it's best to play like Defender first thing, and then you drop Philippe right away, and then you go Letho into the other Philippe and try to get that poison destruction value going early and then commit ball later in the round. Maybe that's a good point of play. Or like I said, you could just use this to activate ball as well. So yeah, works really good having two Philippe's because you just get the statuses raking up very quickly. Defender is really in here to protect Philippe. Um, really good to protect Masquerade Ball from a heat wave as well. So committing this over a long round three. Put some tall punish in our list. We got Yennefer's Invocation. Place an enemy unit at the top of your deck. You can save this at the end of a match and target your opponent's highest powered unit. Royal Decree. Um, I know we're playing Calvate, but Royal Decree, I think it still makes sense because it's a tactic, so it works with Calvate. In addition to that, this deck's effectiveness really relies on getting round control, I believe. And I think Decree makes that more consistent for us because maybe round one you don't get your powerful cards that give you tempo like Brathens, like blight makers so that's what you could search decree for or you know maybe you miss calvate round one and two but you got decree it could save you you know ensuring you get your golds vincent for some more tall punish destroy an enemy unit with status Works really good with Philippe because Philippe gives us status, so it really allows you to select whatever you want and destroy it. But you're going to be playing this um, over round three of Masquerade Ball, I suggest, because then Aristocrat, it can trigger Ball as well. Yeah, with Letho Kingslayer, we're really looking to use Letho, deploying it, transforming it into Philippe, our original copy. So after you've played Philippe, next move, you drop Letho down, click Philippe, transform into a base copy of Philippe without changing power. Um, if for some reason you don't have that option there or if Philippe died and you can't do that, a great alternative play is to go into another Thirsty Dame. It's still good value. It's still gonna be an engine which is boosting. So this is like a round three play. Then we've got Calvate here. Sort the cards in your deck from the highest to the lowest provision cost. At the start of the game, move self up by one position in the deck for each tactic in your starting deck. So like I said, we've got a long list of tactics in here and that's just to work with Calvate for the most part. But what you want to do with Calvate really is just play it first thing round one um, as an opener into the match just to sort your cards 
and ensure consistency that you get all the, the golds you need, really. At the latest, you want to be playing this round two if you missed it. Brathens is an assimilate unit, so it's going to be boosting itself by one or the specified amount whenever we play a card that's not from our starting deck. On deploy, create and play a bronze disloyal unit from your starting deck. So as I explained, we've got Duchess Informant that you could target, and we've also got Emissary. Those are your choices. Usually you want to wait till your opponent plays a good bronze card, and then you're going to play Brathens and spawn Duchess Informant and copy that bronze. Brathens is in this list to help us get round control round one when we're going first. Then we've got Masquerade Bull, solid um, control. It offers us poisons, destroying our opponent's units. We just get these cards spawned and played out that you see here. Bull's um, really looking at, really the way we're looking to seal the deal and win a match, I would say. You're looking to play this over a long round three. Um, and obviously, just make sure you have your aristocrats on you to play out the chapters accordingly. And sometimes slow down the plays if your opponent isn't showing you like a good option to destroy with poison they might give you some bad options try to make you waste the poison that you get from this so then you know maybe if you've got some tactics or blight maker just play those out until you see something better now what i'm going to do is run you through how to execute the strategy for this deck most effectively so what we really want to do with this deck is get around control so round one plays calvate make sure you get all your gold cards coming up in the following rounds play brathens play your blight makers out um diplomacy is pretty good maybe a lock maybe just hopefully that's enough to get you around control what you want to do for the most part is pass round two and just go into a long round three and then from there what you're going to do is work on establishing Philippe engine value early. So what you could do is open up with Defender, play Philippe, play Letho into Philippe. And from there, you can go ahead and start playing Masquerade Ball. Obviously, if you're going to go about it that way, just keep in mind the sequencing of events that you've got enough aristocrats to trigger ball if you're going to use Philippe like that early, okay? So... Then you just go through the round, you commit your leader, you got Tall Punish with Yennefer, Vincent, and hopefully it's enough to win you the match. Keep in mind you can commit Tisha Mutna Sword as well, synergize that with Double Philippe during the round three. Heavy control list, hope you're going to enjoy this, please share your feedback down below. Thanks Dex, appreciate it. It's good when we get Philippe to stick. If if you come up against control decks, it can be pretty hard to make this work. <laughs> the Yaga guy? He was here at the beginning of the stream. That's it, Blade. I forgive. This is gonna be pikeman spam or crossbowman. Cool. Next Spying. And now on to the final act. Soldiers are great. I love playing soldiers. Maybe I should come around to a crossbowman deck myself. I haven't played in ages. I prefer pikemen over them though because you have to keep playing soldiers in order to get value out of this. Pikemen, it doesn't matter.
Maybe I'm just passing now. Wraithen's great. Yeah, good cards. Pretty solid. I think we're just keeping it. Aren't we? So, both played Calvate. Both got all good cards. My deck is more control heavy than theirs, I think. So it's a cross bowman spam their deck. Unless they got pikemen in there too. What is truth if not an illusion? We go where the Empire has not yet reached. So they're looking to commit to this round? Yes, Sully. Remind me after the match. I'll do that for you. Truffle. Okay. Are they looking to bleed? Onward, onward! You'll be showered with Imperial Jones! They are? Oh. Stars contend you shall be victorious today. I think Braithens looks pretty good here. So we still save Philippe Letho. It's just if they've got um, answers for those cards, whether they stick or not. Maybe I keep it. We can use Decree for a lock. And that's it. Should be all right. Operator. Yeah, see, it's Pikeman. Wow, really? It's Pikeman. Should, should we let the poisons go onto that? Probably I do. And we get the zeal with that.
Hell yeah, Dex, you know it. Taunt opponent, sure. Which taunt would you like? Just tell me. Trulof could lift the curse, but who would love such a freak? Just a peek. That is all I need. It hurts him. I think I just go for the early engine value here. So what we're going to do is... The meanest one? <laughs> no worries. I'll do it now. I'll do it after my next move for you. Oh man, if they got no answer to Philippe, it's gonna be GG, I'm telling you. deck is filthy, I'm telling you. We got Calvate, so we come back to this anyway. Alright. Should push for round control against Deathwish. They like to bleed in 2-0. Just like every other deck that we've seen tonight. Been 2 0ing my ass. I shall not repeat Amir's mistakes. It's not really a good copy target for Braithens, I don't think. Get a consume. <laughs> Don't know that there's three rounds. I guess it's the, the deck builds out there. They're kind of geared in a certain way. The best decks are ones where they can play across multiple rounds though, I think. Because you're not always going to get, like, the right thing come up in a match, are you? Like, the right cards in round one. Your name, young man, the man should be cursed into an urchin. Her grace will not be pleased. So they're using a buyer on that. Usually we see that for Rackus Queen. I wonder what kind of a list this is then. It's pretty good points. So I could pull Blight Makers with this. Hunger, crush them with thirst. Units of Doomed are really good for Philippe because you could just start putting statuses on them quicker instead of starting from Doomed and so on. So I'll see what they got to play later on. 
So it's also good for sword here. Gives us a bit more value. Not huge. It's good. Okay. Got our long round. Now. Let's look to set up our play. Very nice. Welcome back. Too many to count. <laughs> Heaps. All right. We can win short round? You think so? You're at therapy. Okay. I hope you're doing all right. Yeah, I completed a degree in psychology. I work in mental health. So they're setting up Toad for next turn? Really? Why? Why are you throwing the crone? Isn't it good? Isn't it good to keep the crone? Yeah, I think that's better. Ah, uh, see, I think a lot of people were affected like that. Change of routine, lifestyle, yeah. I'll pray for you. Hope you recover. I don't know if we really care about this, do we? I, I have no idea what kind of a deck this is they're reversing. Looks a bit mixed. I should probably be safe and open up with Blightmaker to begin with. Just so they don't throw out like a crazy Manticore or something. We're going to go Defender next. Decree into... What's up, Kuvan? What do I do in my field? So, I work with people who come out from jail. And they've got all kinds of mental health, um, all kinds of traumatic upbringings. And I work at a facility where they live there. And, you know, we take them through regular routines, like take them to appointments they have, take them to doctors, help them with shopping, help them with their daily living skills, just general stuff like that. And just try to help educate them on like how to be socializing correctly in society, those kinds of things. Yeah, sure, Nori is very nice. Say say what you do too. <laughs> I get confused sometimes too in chat if someone's talking to me or not. Do your thing, Nori. Put the spotlight on you, don't worry about me. <laughs> oh man. 
Uh, I think Philippe should really start wrecking here. So let's throw him down. Let us put an end to this nonsense, this farce. Um, do I care to lock? I mean, we've got a lot of locks. Why not lock it? So Frog's going to bite the dust quick here. Yeah, I love what I do, Kuvin. 100%. We don't want to give him that value either, I feel. Alright, here we go. I'll behave, I, promise. I promise I'll behave. Hey, no After this hey. match, not now. Alright, here we go. Now we're going to work the magic. If you can't answer this, it's so deadly. You see, told you, they got Manticore. I told you guys. I know my monster's decks, I know what's out there. So, let's do this. Bye bye. There we go. Now we play ball. It's good. I'm gonna play behind defender still. You never know if they got heat wave. All day, baby. All day. Goes double leader. Yeah, you should. Oh, look at the Ekimaras. Oh, 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 man. I'm feeling bad. Mm, a superb specimen. True. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, 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 oh. oh, We just need our round one cards just to get control and we're just going for a long beautiful round. We eaten up. Yes, shield is absolutely a status. Yes. Thank you for the follow, my friend. Ruben, appreciate it. See, now we're coming up into the favorable matchups. I had a lot of heavy control matches. You know, it's, it's pretty difficult to get Philippe to stick in those ones. Thank you for the follows. We can use Decree to search for Blightmaker for more tempo. Um, Just is actually pretty good in this match too. I was born and raised in Hobart, Tasmania. And then I moved to Sydney when I was like 13, 12 for high school. You know, Tesha Mutna Sword really just deals with that so good there. If we want to play it like that. It saves our other tall punish. I could go Philippe as well. Yeah, it's pretty clean. What do they say about it? <laughs> I don't know. What is it? Who have you been talking to? It's basically a little island. <laughs> yeah, it's so clean, eh? Oh, Just just gets rid of this all day. Uh, we just got answers. We just got answers. Time is 
easy bit. Getting down. You might guess it. The Vomora has detest in truth. <laughs> gotcha. I never heard of it until now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's just get the long round. Come on, my friends. Oh. This is an early necker. Spirit, what need ye to flee this world ever free? Wow, dandelion, really? With pleasure. That's actually a lot of tempo there. Boost you in your deck by two. Hmm. Boost the top unit in your deck by one. I don't know if I really want to use lock there. Well, they they committed pretty hard. It's bigger than your country. Where are you from? Arendite, yeah, no doubt. If it's Golden Necker, we're gonna see it. You think so? Boost, it's just boosting in deck. Oh, crap. Should I go for leap here now then? Still got... I could go Letho with um, Decree. Yeah, can add up, I guess. Thank you for the follow. Really appreciate it. They spent big, my friends, though. Trust me. Golden Neck is really good to get out here. It wasn't even that good for them. They got Pella. Netherlands, okay. Really? Oh my goodness. What am I seeing here? Guys, we want to enjoy ourselves on this stream. Look, we're going to go Letho Kingslayer into this right now. Why not? We're here to have fun, my friends, aren't we? We're here to have a good time. Gwent is about having a good time. I'll try to save Braithens. <laughs> Pretty much. It's been it's been like that this match. Alright, alright. We're just going long round, baby. We ain't playing around. 
we're gonna drag him into deep waters. The thing is, we need to get to our aristocrats too, though. I have to skip through these. Because we did spend Vincent and um, Philippe, yeah, yeah. So we pull... Oh no, no, we don't want that. Come on, give me Van Morlehem Hunter. You can do it. Oh! -ho! All day, all day, baby. I never doubt myself, guys. I want you to know that. I have a lot of faith in my ability to call upon cards that I need. You must just ask. You shall receive. That's what happens. You know, I could even copy that and then we can break their shields through Braithens, which is really good. It's a pretty fine play. Maybe I open up with... Should it be Ball to begin with? No, Defender for protection. Yep, that's right. Defender, ball, I think. Manifesting your fate, yes. Luckiest card drawer on Twitch when it comes to Gwent. Thank you. I pride myself on it. Okay. I think we're killing immortals with poison. And we're going to lock um, Sorceress at the same time. I think I might lock first, just to reduce that, because we want to save Yen for, um, what's it called? Rogni, I think. Now we're going to use the shields against them. They already wasted the uh, Pella. We saw that. Yes, asking you shall receive. To hit Rognir and Immortals. Yes, we're definitely going to take out Immortals with Poisons. And I'm going to use Sorceress to break shields. Okay, so now we copy Sorceress and we start doing that shield breaking. Oh, Kelda. True love could lift the curse, but who would love such a freak? My duty? To stick my nose where it doesn't belong. Okay. GG already, you think? Let's see. It's a very good counter. Um, carrying Sorceress here. It's fantastic. Looks like a win. 
Let's always remain focused until the very end. You just never know sometimes in Gwent. It's very unpredictable. So whenever they're using leader, it's triggering our dames. Keep that in mind too. We're getting a boost. Blightmaker is a good tempo at the end of the match. No problem. It's hard. It's hard for them. I know. I was in their position yesterday. Early Rogner. Well, let's have a look here. Defeat them with hunger, crush them with thirst. Snap and done. Heckling kill. Guess we just take it again. We you sorceress. Uh, they're just blocking their their row back there. Though. It's not really good. They should have played that melee, I think. I don't want to hit Rog near there. Nah. Whatever. I was saving Yennefer for that. Yeah, that's good blade. Yo, Dex, what's up? Main screen favorite card. Viper. <laughs> what's it gonna be? Alright. Ooh, okay. That was actually pretty close. They did really well. It's a very hard match. <laughs> 